So I'm just going to work through a couple of example questions using the Hardy-Weinberg equation. So in this particular question, it says that one in 5,000 people in the UK, and it's a recessive allele. So that means that the one in 5,000 people represents the recessive phenotype, which is Q squared from our Hardy-Weinberg equations. If we know that 1 over 5,000 is Q squared, then P plus Q equals 1. That means that 1 minus, oops, sorry, 1 minus the 1 over 5,000 equals P. So we just simply did some rearranging in the equation there. Yeah, just to be clear, folks, that should be a square root of 1 over 5,000 because we've got the square at the top there. It's the square root of 1 over 5,000. So 1 minus the square root of 1 over 5,000 will give us a value for P. Tap that into a calculator. And that gives us a value of 0.985587, et etc. et cetera. And we're just going to round that off. Quick check of the question. It doesn't tell us that we have a particular number of values that we have to round off for decimal places. So I'm just going to pick three. Give me a nice easy number to work with, which is 0.9858, which runs off to 0.986. So from the first question, we had 0.986. From there, we then have to calculate the percentage of carriers. Well, carriers, again, be your Hardy-Weinberg equation. We've got P squared plus 2pq plus q squared and it's the 2pq that represents our carriers or heterozygous condition so we know the value for p we know the value for q from the previous question and what i'm going to do is i'm going to use when i did my original calculation i just rounded it off to three decimal places i'm going to do the same thing with my number four sorry with my value for q which means i've got 0.0114 and up there for p we've got 0.986 that's simply two times 0.986 times 0.014 now if you punch that into a calculator you get your answer gives us a value of 0.0 27608. I'm going to round that off again, three decimal places, it means it becomes 0 0.028. Now, this is we got to be careful. In the question, it clearly says it wants your answer as a percentage. That 0 0.028 is a 
frequency. So to get it to a percentage, we simply times it by 100, which gives us a value of 2.8%. So in the last part of the question, it asks us to calculate how many people would be carriers if there's a population of 65 million. Well, from the previous question, we know there's 2.8% of the population are going to be carriers. So we can simply take the 65 million. Now, there's 100 different ways you can do this. This is just how I do percentages because it's straightforward and simple for me. Whatever way you want to work it out, it's absolutely fine as long as you know what you're doing and you get the correct answer. I always divide by 100 to get 1% of something, and then I want to times it by 2.8% to get the 2.8% of 65 million. And that will give me a value of 1.82 million. And that's an important word in your answer. Um, or you can obviously put down 182 with all of the zeros, whichever way is easiest for you. So in question two, there's an awful lot of information and it's four marks. Now, when you look through all the information, it tells you all about different phenotypes and genotypes and everything else. But when it gets down to the actual question, it says calculate the frequency of carriers for both of the two locations. When you're calculating the frequency, again, back to your Hardy Weinberg, we're just going to calculate P or Q and they have to give you a way of telling you one of those numbers in advance. It can be awkward, but they have to give you one of those numbers in advance. And in this case, they have actually given us a value for Q for both locations. But we have to do a little calculating to get there. So if we just focus on the USA one to start with, in the USA, we have one over 500. That. So one over 500. That 1 over 500 equals q squared, which equals 0 0.002. And the important thing again, folks, watch that square. To get q, we have to get the square root of 0 0.002. And that's where most people go wrong with these type of questions. They forget about the square root. When we do that, we can simply round the value off. Uh, we're going to round it off rather than three decimal places. We're going to three significant figures and you should get a value of 0 0.0447213, et cetera, et cetera, and round it off to 0 0.0447. Once we've done that, we can then say, well, one minus, so we now have to calculate the same thing in terms of carriers, but we have to do it for the West Africa population as opposed to the American population. Now, the thing you need to be careful of straight away is that they have given us a value for Q, but they've given it in a very, very horrible way. Because what they've actually given us is Q squared because we're talking about phenotypes there. So what we're saying is 2%, which is 2 over 100, equals 0 0.02, make that decimal point clear, which is Q squared. And don't forget that square, folks, it's important. We are dealing with populations, we are dealing with genotypes, so there are two alleles involved. If you're dealing with allele frequencies, then you're just talking about P and Q on their own. Next thing we need to do is we need to work out the value for Q. So Q is equal to the square root of 0 0.02, which should give us a rounded off value of 0 0.141. Again, going with our three figures, it doesn't tell us anything in the exam by rounding off or any particular decimal places or significant figures. So I'm just going to stick to the rule of three. If I then go on and say, well, P plus Q equals one, 
1 minus 0 0.141 will give us a value of 0 0.859. And then we simply did work out our carriers. It's 2 times P times Q, which is 0 0.141 multiplied by 0 0.859 multiplied by 2, which gives. I'm not going to write the answer right to this. I'm just going to make a statement on the second question. What we're basically looking at here is the fact that when you have the phenotypes in the previous part of the question, it clearly states that the homozygous dominant, the homozygous recessive phenotypes result in phenotypes that are actually quite likely to die. So you're actually bringing selection in here. And as a consequence, it's the heterozygous condition that actually is most likely to survive in that particular environment. So in this question, we have exactly the same setup as before. It's given us the population size of the recessive genotype, which in this case is 0 0.05 out of every 1,000. And that again is going to represent Q squared. We simply want to get Q, then what we have to do is get the square root of 0 0.05 over 1,000. And I'll give us Q, which should give us a value of 0 0.07 when you round it off to the three figures. Again, P plus Q equals 1. 1 minus 0 0.007 equals P, which will give us a value for P of 0 0.993. And then we simply do 2 times P times Q which is 2 times 0 0.993 multiplied by 0 0.007, which should give us a value of 0 0.013902. When we round it off again, it gives us that value. Now, if you punch all those numbers into a calculator and you don't do any rounding off for P or for Q, um, you will actually find, when you get to your final answer and round it off, your final answer is 0 0.0140421, etc. Um, and when you round it off, obviously that rounds off to 0 0.014. Again, just making sure. So we have part B of the question says, calculate the percentage. Again, folks, just to be nice and see if I'm just going to underline that to make sure it sticks out whenever I'm reading the question again at the end. So calculate the percentage of the population that do not have the recessive allele. Now, there's two ways of doing this. We can simply say, well, we've already calculated values for P and Q. And if you've written it out like I've been telling you to write it out, you very quickly can go back into your previous notes for the previous part of the question and simply say, well, if you're in this non-recessive group well the only non-recessive group is the p squared group which equals the value of 0.993 multiplied by 0.993 which we punch into a calculator gives us 0.986049 which we round off to 0.986 but remember, it says as a percentage, we have to times 100 
equals a value of 98.6%. And that's how you do the last one. Um, there are a couple of other ways of doing it, but that's the simplest and quickest way. Um, if you had gone through the calculator method, not written any of the two values down, what you could have done is taken your value from the previous question, represents 2PQ. In here, we've got a value for Q squared equals 0 0.05 all over a thousand. Just like all the other questions, we've been given a way of calculating P or Q, but they've done it in a really, really horrible way this time. If you're not paying attention, you'd simply look at 7 per 100,000 and you'd go 7 over 100,000 equals Q squared and then continue on from there. And if you were to do that, you'd be horribly, horribly wrong. Because if you look at the question, the question actually says that this is a dominant allele. What that means is that our 7 over 100,000 actually represents p squared plus 2pq. So hard to be answer the question because we can't separate p and q from the heterozygous. But what we can say is that if 7 out of 100,000 represents those two groupings, well then the remaining group of people must represent q squared. So what that means is q squared is 99993 over 100,000. When you then get the square root of that, you eventually work it down for a value of q, it's the square root of 0 0.9993 over 100,000. And we're going to round the value off in the calculator. We're going to... Now, this next question is a bit odd. Um, the reason I say this bit odd is because I've looked at the original mark scheme, which hopefully I've corrected at this point. But in the original mark scheme, it does all sorts of weird and wonderful calculations with dividing by 100,000. I suspect it has something to do with the fact that there's a population of 100,000 in the question. I don't know why they've done it, it's just beyond me. But the fact that when the original mark scheme has been checked by me, uh, they've actually rounded it off wrong and rounded 6999 off the 69. I'm going to take it that that is just a mistake. Uh, hopefully, the version that you're seeing has the updated corrections on it, but just to point it out just in case. If we're calculating the percentage, again, highlighted the underline it, sorry to make it stand out, of a population that is likely to be heterozygous. Well, likely to be heterozygous is our 2PQ, which is 2, and again, P and Q. If you've done your writing, uh, working out correctly, you should see P and Q nice and clearly in the previous answer. Um, I'm just looking across at all my calculations, and I can see that my value for Q is not 0.999965, and my value for P comes out at not 0.12345, there we go. And when you punch that into a calculator, it will give you a value back of not 0.12345.